Okay guys, so here I have a uh, 4R uh, 55E99. This is off of a uh, Mazda B3000 3.0 liter. And uh, this will also be in a uh, Ford Ranger 3.0 uh, pickup truck. Uh, we're going to do a teardown inspection here right quick and see what, what the issue is here. Uh, let's go ahead and get started uh, disassembling this transmission. Like always, the first thing that we want to do, we want to remove everything external. And uh, once we get everything external, we remove the bell housing. And then we flip it over and remove our valve body. And then everything from the inside of the barrel of the case. Alright, well... Uh, Let's get started then. I'm going to go ahead and remove that extension housing. And now those bolts are going to be 17, 17 millimeters. Okay, so we, we see here our parking gear. Uh, this is the output shaft, and here we see our parking pole, uh, and this completes our uh, parking mechanism. And when you take it off, this is the parking pole, P A W L, and then you have the uh, return a uh, little spring that returns it uh, or keeps it away from this shaft. And the pivot pin. Let's get that thing out of the way. Now let's go ahead and uh, now we're gonna going to remove the uh, linkage lever. But whenever you remove the linkage levers on this unit, you have to hold the lever and then get your uh, bolt out. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're gonna use uh, some pliers here and. Uh, Hold it in place. I'm going to go ahead and just flip it over a little bit. We're going to hold the lever assembly and the reason you want to do that uh, is because you don't want to break the little mechanism that's inside the little, uh, a little rod that's inside the uh, manual valve and I'll show, you, I'll show you that in a minute. You get your socket and then you hold it to where this rod won't move and it will not break that little uh, the little linkage pin. Now we get our bolts for the uh, digital transmission range sensor or like everybody knows it, neutral safety switch. Get this thing out of the way. Now let's go ahead and uh, take the uh, band adjust adjuster off. Those are 19. Now we're going to remove this uh, uh, clip that holds our uh, wiring uh, harness. That little clip there. Now in the back of the harness, there is a little uh, clip that holds down the harness so it won't fall inside of the, uh, of the case. And to remove it, you have to kind of uh, hold the clip and push outward and then just tap it down slightly. You don't want to go too far, just a little bit, so that that tab will be uh, inside of the, uh, of the hole. Once you remove your valve body, then you can remove your wire and harness. Now we're going to remove our uh, bell housing. Those are 17 millimeters as well.
Okay, and we just tap it and it comes out. This is our input shaft. And here we see the pump. The pump is bolted to the bell housing. Here's our pump washer. This washer is selectable. There's different thicknesses. And this one, I don't see a number here. They go by color and they go by thicknesses. This is the factory uh, washer. There's no numbers on it, but you can actually uh, measure the thickness of it. And there's different sizes available for that. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and disassemble the pump here. It's a hole by a six T40 or Torx 40 uh, bolt. Get the bolts out of the way. And remove our pump from our bell housing. This is our wear plate. This is where the pump gears uh, uh, ride here. This is our pump gasket. And on our bell housing, uh, it houses the uh, pump bushing. So you have the pump bushing in the front seal and the pump o-ring as well uh, stays in the bell housing. This is kind of old, so see how hard this o-ring is. It's old and hard. Get that thing out of the way. Let's get the wear plate out of the way as well. Here are the pump gears. Let's go ahead and remove them from the pump. Kind of rotate them a little bit. The transmission fluid creates a little bit of suction so it keeps them in there. They're not stuck. And now here on the pump gears, this is the outer pump gear and this is the inner pump gear. There is a little bevel here or uh, it's kind of tapered. Uh, this goes towards the uh, torque converter and on the 4R 44s and 5R uh, 44s and 5R 55Es on the E models, they have an O-ring inside of the uh, of the inner pump gear, as you see there. And this has to be there, otherwise you're going to have uh, some issues. You're going to have some torque converter and lubrication issues. Let's go ahead and put that out of the way. 4R 44s and uh, 5R. Uh, 55s, 55 55Es, and 4R 55s uh, from 96 and up. They don't have uh, two uh, ceiling rings like you see on the old models. You have this uh, bearing instead of a bushing, and you have the ceiling rings on the outer portion. Let's try and remove one so you can see what I'm talking about. So there is a ceiling ring. And these, ceiling, these two ceiling rings, they uh, seal the pressure. Uh, when the pressure goes in, it applies the drum and uh, it keeps it from leaking. So you have two ceiling rings uh, to apply in this drum. The bearing uh, rides here and the ceiling rings are on the outer portion of, of this sleeve here. Okay, let's get the pump out of the way. Now here we already uh, took our uh, band anchors, so the next here, this is the overdrive drum or a coast clutch drum, uh, different part suppliers, they call it uh, different in different names, uh, but in, 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 in a nutshell it's the overdrive because the outer portion of the drum, uh, when the band holds, uh, it's overdrive. Uh, and the inside of the drum you have the coast uh, clutches. Let's go ahead and take this thing out, see what it looks like. Unlatch the band. 
Here are the coast clutches. And these are the frictions and the plates. This one only takes two frictions, a pressure plate, snap ring, then you have the uh, piston and the return spring retainer and the springs, some return springs in there. We're going to go ahead and uh, tear, we're going to tear these drums after we tear the whole uh, transmission, after we take uh, everything from inside the barrel of the cage. Now this being a four speed, this is the overdrive drum, I mean the overdrive band, and this is fourth gear. Now on a 5R55E, the difference is that you have an output speed sensor here, and then here on the, on the parking gear, on the inside, uh, they machined it, and then they installed a, uh, a reluctor ring that reached the output speed sensor. Now the way that works, uh, a four-speed uh, transmission, you have a forward uh, drum, which is inside the case, is first gear. This band right here is called the intermediate band, is second gear. And then you have the direct drum, or third and reverse, that applies to make third gear. And then this band comes on in fourth gear. Now on the five-speed, on the 5R55E, uh, it's a little different. You have the forward drum, which is first gear, and then uh, it does a uh, the overdrive band applies, and uh, it gives you a uh, second in between first and second, and then it releases this, and then uh, it applies the direct drum, which is uh, no, yeah, it applies the band, the intermediate band to make third, then the then the direct drum to make fourth. And then he reapplies this band to make fifth, fifth gear. I hope I didn't confuse you there. But we're working on four speed. Uh, they're exactly the same except for the uh, output shaft speed sensor and the reluctor, the parking gear that has an added reluctor. Valve bodies are the same. Most of the parts internally are the same. Four 44s. I mean, the pin, they have some pinions missing on the planets, but four 44s. Uh, 5R, uh, 55s, uh, they both, you can interchange parts between the two. Okay, with that being said, here is our uh, Overdrive Planet Sun Gear, our Overdrive uh, Planetary Gear Assembly. Now, uh, this bearing came apart, it is not damaged, uh, they just uh, do that, but there it is, a complete bearing again. Now here we have uh, an overdrive uh, or input sprag or overdrive sprag. What a sprag does is a one-way clutch. It turns in one direction, free wheels one direction, and it locks at the opposite direction, as you see here. I'm holding the planet, and I'm turning the sprag counterclockwise, and it locks clockwise. So we get this thing out of the way. It's always a good idea to replace this sprag. I've seen them where they flip and they turn both ways and uh, your vehicle will quit moving. It won't move unless you put it in manual second. Then you have a second gear start and then you can manually upshift it. If you have that issue, then this is an issue. That's your problem. And this overdrive planet is the inner race of the sprag and they both work together. If this is damaged, this is going to be damaged. Go ahead and get this thing out of the way. And these are the two band anchors. They anchor into the band. So far that band looks in good shape. Let's go ahead and get these things. Also check your splines. Make sure you that your splines are not stripped. These are not. They look in very good shape. Okay, I wanna, this is the turbine speed sensor or your input speed sensor. Let's go ahead and remove the bolt for that sensor. We're not going to remove the sensor yet. To remove that sensor, we have to undo it from the wiring harness. Okay, let's get some more items out of the way here. 
And let's go ahead and flip this thing over and remove our pan and see what our pan looks like. Okay, for that we need a 13 millimeter socket. We'll go ahead and remove all of our bolts. comes the fluid. Well we see uh, some uh, converter clutch material and some regular tear and wear. A little or two little pieces of metal there. The magnet has it's a little fluffy but that's just uh, carbon from the same uh, fluid. The fluid is uh, petroleum based and petroleum is based out of carbon and that's what you see here. This carbon buildup, that's from the fluid and from the friction plates, from the bands, from uh, the clutch material. Uh, it's just the wear out, it's just carbon. Okay, so we have four shift solenoids, and we have a lockup solenoid, and we have a pressure control solenoid. Pressure control solenoid, two shift solenoids, torque converter clutch solenoids or lockup solenoid, and two more uh, shift solenoids. And this is our transmission filter. So we're going to go ahead and remove that filter now. It has two pickups here, and those two pickup holes should have an O-ring. Make sure that your O-ring is not ripped or kinked or missing. If it is missing, you're going to have delayed engagements and eventually you're going to burn up your transmission. Now let's go ahead and uh, get this uh, solenoids or wire and harness away from the solenoids. And the way you want to do that, you get a little bit of a flat screwdriver and kind of twist a little bit. And then remove it. There we go. You can also pull on it, they're pretty stout, but sometimes when uh, your transmission has been overheating, uh, these wires, they get real brittle, and if the insulation comes off or falls off of your wires, your whole wiring harness has to be replaced, and it's not that cheap. So just be careful. Sometimes it's inevitable. I mean, it will uh, come apart. Torque converter clutch solenoid, shift solenoid, shift solenoid, pressure control solenoid. We get this thing to the side, get it out of the way. Now we're going to remove all our 10 millimeter bolts. And this is a, a reverse servo band cover. There is a gasket in between the cover and the spacer plate. As you see here, the gasket is stuck. So here is the gasket. Let's go ahead and take all the bolts out. You're going to remove most of the bolts except two. The two yellow bolts, you're going to leave them on there because they hold the solenoid brackets. And uh, it's very easy to identify them as this one and this one. You don't remove that, not just yet. Before we continue, remember we were removing the linkage arm with that uh, the, the nut and we hold it with the pliers. 
Why did we do that? Because if you put your impact wrench or any kind of wrench, you're going to go all the way down here, and uh, this is not going to fall all the way down. And see this rod right here? If you put pressure on this rod, you're going to break it. You're going to break this rod, and it's no longer going to pull your manual valve. See how he holds the manual valve and it pulls it in and out? Uh, it is very common for the 5R55Ws, the 2002 or 3 and up units. Uh, it is more critical and is more brittle. Uh, if, you, if you don't hold that, that lever, this will come off and now you will need this assembly here. Okay, with that being said, let's go ahead and take all the, remove all the bolts. It is very common on the 4R44s, 4R55s, and 5R55Es on the E models that the gasket underneath this two solenoids where it meets the case and the separator plate on the valve body because the bolts become loose, uh, it rips the gasket and then you will have an uh, incorrect gear ratio in third gear and or second gear. I have a video on a unit that I tore down that the gasket was ripped and it had those codes. Uh, you can go to my channel and look it up. Let's go ahead and carefully pull this valve body off and see if that gasket is torn. Okay. Let's go ahead and flip it over. It's actually torn right here. Uh, on this feed hole where you have the torque converter clutch valve. Let me get this thing closer to the camera here. It usually rips from here and it pulls outward, but if you see here, there's pieces of gasket missing. I hope that you can see that well. I don't know if I'm pointing it right at the camera. I can't look at it. So we had a torque converter clutch issue here, and we probably have reverse issue as well. As you see there's a piece of blown gasket here, there's a piece on the side, and there's one stuck on the on the case. We see here this is blown to the outside and this is blown to the outside and that other piece is here so it was leaking fluid, it was slipping in reverse as well. No material missing here. But, let me show you here, the gasket is cut. That was about to happen. I don't know if you can see it there, I don't know if probably the light is shining on it. But here is the warm track and it's already cut. It already has an indentation. And uh, the pressure will push this gasket out and you will have uh, missing gears. Which, which in here we had a missing lockup and slipping in reverse. Let's go ahead and dig in a little further and see what else are we going to find in there. So far we have found uh, some issues. Let's remove our uh, reverse servo. It has two O-rings. You see this uh, servo pin pushes the band and it holds the low reverse drum. Here's that piece of, of the gasket here get this out of the way. Now we're going to remove the uh, input speed sensor or the turbine speed sensor disconnected from the wiring harness. Get some pliers here. Kind of slippery. Just kind of pull it up. It's a little brittle. There's pieces falling off already. But you also want to replace this sensor because it's inside the unit. If you have a uh, turbine speed sensor code, you're not going to be able to replace it unless you disassemble your whole transmission. As you're looking at here, you have an input speed sensor code. It's right there. Input speed sensor, 
inside of your transmission. If this fails, have to pull it out, open it back up, and replace it. Go ahead and get this uh, band anchor assembly here. Now we're going to remove our uh, snap ring here. And you probably already, if you've seen my videos, you probably already have a screwdriver like this. I have a few of them. I have some longer screwdrivers. If you see here, I have a little uh, notch cut out there. And that's to hold uh, our snap rings. This is an auto zone. I bought this at auto zone. That's why I'm using this for this video. I have some snap-on uh, screwdrivers, longer screwdrivers that are like this. But my point is that you can get, get a screwdriver like this on any auto part and use it as a special tool. See that? Hold it and pull. Now we get it out. There we go. Now this snap ring here is flat on the bottom and is kind of beveled on the top. The flat, the flat part goes towards the center support and the bevel you know, goes up. Flat down, bevel up. And you always want to point it at, uh, that's like 5 o'clock, because I have this thing upside down, because you want to clear the wiring that goes for the uh, chirping speed sensor. Now the center support has a bolt here, and you take it off from, from over here, from the bottom valve body portion of the, of, the, of the case. What I have here is a Torx 30 uh, long. And if you want the part number, I mean, I can give that to you. It's uh, FTX L30E. If you missed the part number, just rewind it and get it. A regular Torx socket won't go in there, but a regular Torx or Allen wrench will work. Now, you see the wire protruding up a little bit, and we didn't push it that much. Now we can remove our wire and harness. Remember the clip or the tap I was tell, uh, telling you about? This one here. This sits on the case, and when it's out of, of, out of the case, you cannot push it in. It holds the harness uh, together so it won't you know, sink in the case. You have two O-rings. So what you do, you press on this tab and then just tap it a little bit. Uh, so when you're ready to take it out, like you were ready to take it out now, then we can remove it. Get that out of the way. Okay, now let's go ahead and take our center support out. I don't know if there's enough light. I, I see like shadows on it. You just pull this thing out. Hold it and pull. We have the same uh, uh, setup here as our uh, pump assembly. You have a bearing in the middle and you have uh, two ceiling rings on the outside. Oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention. On the overdrive planet, on the, on the E models, electronical models, because you have an A4LD 94 and down, which is not electronic. These are, this is the reluctor for the turbine speed sensor. You got to have this reluctor. Make sure you don't drop this planetary gear. If you drop it and you bend it, you're going to have some issues with the input speed signal. Make sure it does not get distorted in any way or fashion. You want this very straight like it is, and you want it in one piece. Let's go ahead and unlatch the bands from the anchors. Go ahead and pull the uh, drums. I just get my middle finger and get it in the hole and just pull the, the both drums at the same time. We have a bearing here that goes in between the center support and the direct drum. Remember I was telling you about first gear. This is the forward drum, this is first gear, and this is the direct drum, or third and reverse, because we're talking with uh, about a uh, four speed. Let's go ahead and our, get our frictions removed.
pressure plate, friction, plate, friction, steel, friction, steel, friction, steel. Direct. Here we have another bearing. Pick this up. Put it to the side. Same scenario here on the forward drum. We have a bearing and we have two sealing rings. Here we see that our forward clutch is smoked. Let me get them out so I can show you. This uh, ring gear should have fallen off or came off on its own and is holding the forward clutches. Here we have a brass uh, tapered washer or step washer. Here's our pressure plate. Look at this, man. See this clutch? See this friction? Uh, I call them friction because that's what they are. But this is the clutch and this is the steel. If you look at it, smoked. Smoked. This is smoked as well. These are smoked. We just hammer these things out and get them out of here and we can reuse our uh, ring gear. As you see here, nothing happened to the ring gear. Why were they stuck? Let's take a closer look. If you see it on the teeth, it has wear marks, it has like little steps. That's where they were stuck because they were almost to strip. Sometimes you will see the teeth strip and uh, they won't hold on the ring gear and you would have no forward gear. I see that a lot on the uh, E4ODs and the 4100, the bigger units. So here's our issue. Slipping in forward or no forward engagement. Now this uh, little rubber uh, piece that you see here this is actually the wavy for the forward clutch and what it does is that they use this rubber piece here to cushion the forward engagement and if I get it closer to you it's melted from the side where it was on the steel plate and on the opposite end it looks perfectly well uh, this is no good but it comes in the kit so don't worry about it here we have one more bearing get that out of the way. Now we have our forward drum, our direct drum, and our coast clutch drum, our overdrive drum. We have another band in here. The bands look in good shape, but let me tell you something. They like to break. I have a video on a 2003 and up Explorer with broken bands. You want to see how they break? You can watch that video as well. Let's get the anchors out of the way. We have our forward planetary gear. We have another bearing here. And the ring gear goes in here. Now, now that we tore this thing apart, now we know exactly that this is a uh, 4R44. Why is it a 4R44? It only has four pinions on the planet. 4R55 has two more pinions where these are missing here. This is totally normal. There's nothing wrong with this planet. It's for a 44, not a 55. 55 has uh, six pinions. 44s have four pinions. This is our sun gear shell. You have gear, sun gear on both sides. The, the Inside portion of the sun gear is for the forward planetary and uh, the rear part of the sun gear is for the rear planetary gear. Now, let's go ahead and get more bearings out. One more bearing. The other piece of the band anchor. Now we have a snap ring in here. I don't, I don't know if I got the light shining right in there, but we already this far. Trust me, there's a snap ring holding that planet. Uh, I'm just going get to uh, get it a little bit over here so I can uh, actually see the snap ring. Okay, well, I got the snap ring out. Let's go ahead and take our uh, planetary gear out. 
Same scenario here. Four pinions, and he has a slot for two more pinions. 4R44, four pinions, 4R55, six pinions, 5R55, E model, six pinions as well. The reason I say E model, because the W, the N, and the S is a totally different transmission. Same principles in operation as the 5R55E, but it's totally different. It has a solenoid pack. Uh, it has a, it's totally different. I have a video on one of those, and uh, you want to look at it, watch it, 5R55W. I have a 5R55W introduction and uh, shift kit installation. Now we have a, uh, a, snap, a snap ring in there. It's an external snap ring, so we're going to use uh, some snap ring pliers here. And for that, I do need my little flashlight. Let me see here. It's a little dark in here. Inside the barrel of the case. Got to get it in the little holes. There we go. There's our snap ring. Now we get our uh, rear uh, ring gear or planetary carrier. And we all know it, it's shorter to say ring gear, rear ring gear, rear planet ring gear. But this is the planetary carrier. And we get the uh, low reverse drum out of the barrel of the case. And we have this little needle bearing that likes to lose its needles. It's losing, it's, it's missing one here. This is very critical, always replace it very inexpensive. Let's set that thing out of the way. Here we have the low reverse drum where the reverse band applies. Same thing here. We see, it's a little, sorry, it's a little slippery bearing here. And we have a uh, one-way clutch assembly or a sprag, low reverse sprag. Let me get the low reverse band out of the barrel of the case. Actually, the band for that gasket to be torn is actually in good shape. But don't fool yourself looking at the friction that's all around the bands. And like I always uh, stress, I can't stress this enough, always look at your apply points. See this band has some lines and at the apply point it does not have lines. This band is worn. Output shaft. And we have here another washer. Five R fifty five E's. When it went to the four R to the five R, see this is solid piece of metal. Uh, the 5R55, they machined quite a bit here, and then they installed a sleeve that, ha that has a cutout uh, as a reluctor for the output speed sensor. So uh, this part, you cannot put this uh, uh, parking gear on a 5R55. If you do, you're going to have an output speed sensor uh, code set, and it's never going to work. Your transmission is never going to work. So this piece cannot be interchanged. The rest of them, the drums, the planets, well, except for the four pinion, but you have some 4R55, four, four speed, that do have the six pinion planetary gears. Now let's go ahead and remove the servos, but before we do that, uh, I want to, uh, for you to make note that The servos are coated, and on this one, they are both the same. They're AB and AB servos. Uh, on a 5R, you will have a, a CZ or Charlie uh, or Zebra Charlie and BB servos. So there's a couple of uh, different uh, combinations of servos. So uh, just be careful. Uh, pay attention where 
what code was on what bore, or take a picture of it or write it down, you know, so that you'll know which servo came out of which hole. Okay, with that being said, what I do is so I'm going to spray fluid all over on the walls. I put my hand here and I just tap on it. See how fluid comes out? Yeah, I want to do that because I want to get behind the snap ring. So once, you hit, once you get behind the snap ring, then you can take the servo out. Remember, and more fluid came out. Now what's nice about it, here we go. This one was ready to come out. So this is the return spring. This is our uh, servo, or servo piston. This is our servo co uh, cover or housing. And the way you check them, you make sure that they're nice and soft. And I don't know if you can see that, but it has to be protruding out. It's a lip. Fluid goes through here to this side of the of the of the lip. When pressure when it uh, it pressurizes, uh, the lip actually holds it and it pushes the servo. The lip on this one is on the opposite direction. When fluid gets into uh, on on this side of the servo, it releases the servo. So you have apply and, re and release circuits on the servos on both of them. Now, servo bore wear on this unit is not critical. 5R55Ws, S, and N on those three units, they're always damaged from the servo bore. Now, here, I mean, I'll, I'll, once I get this off, I'll, I'll get the camera off and I'll try to shoot in there so you can see that, uh, that there is exactly, this one has exactly. Nowhere, nowhere whatsoever. Now on this one, since it did not came out on its own, right here where it goes into the case, I just helped it a little bit to push it out. See all that mud, you know, all on the outside? That's why it got stuck. The other one, I guess it didn't have that much and it just popped itself out. little bit. Return springs. The harder or the stiffer one or the taller one goes on your, on your intermediate servo bore. The lighter one goes on your overdrive servo bore. You don't have to write it down, just rewind it and watch it again. Same thing here, check your rubber, make sure it's nice and soft and the lip is protruding outwards. Same scenario here, nowhere on that bore. So there we have it, 4R44, we confirmed that it's a 44 for the, because of the planets. Completely disassembled. I hope that you, you enjoyed this uh, 4R44 uh, teardown inspection of this unit. I will... Uh, make a follow-up video on the valve body itself and modifications that I do to this unit for a torque converter clutch uh, and for some other issues. Okay, well, uh, my name is Hiram. Always, uh, I mean, uh, click like, subscribe, click that button, and do whatever you want with this video. Okay, well, before we go, let's go ahead and uh, disassemble one of those drums. I'll go ahead and put the camera closer to the foot press, and I'll show you how to disassemble one of them drums. Okay, so here we are at the foot press. As we see here, we have a snap ring here that holds the retainer. Uh, we're going to use the foot press. We're going to compress the uh, retainer 
get the snap ring, snap ring out, get our springs away, and then get the piston out. Okay, so you adjust your foot press to a, a preferred height. Adjust your legs, your little legs here, and then just uh, with your foot, just press down on your foot press. And voila, here's our snap ring. We have removed our snap ring. Now here we have the retainer. We have all of them snap uh, return springs. Just gonna go ahead and throw them on the bench. And here we have our piston. This is our piston. This is what compresses uh, the clutch packs. And same scenario here. You have a lip. The lip goes to the bottom. The pressure goes inside the drum and it pushes the piston and it compresses the clutches. It compresses them. When it is, uh, it is not applied, uh, these frictions are loose. They're not applied. They're not holding the drum. When, when the drum applies, fluid comes in here and it compresses the clutch back and then the whole assembly turns. That's how it works. Okay guys, so here we have it, a 4R44E transmission uh, disassembled. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them down below. Uh, if you, other technicians are watching this video and uh, want to add something to it, uh, please do so uh, down below. Uh, share your information. Somebody asked a question down below. If you, if you know the answer, uh, just go ahead and post it out there. Uh, let's help each other out. Uh, click the subscribe button. Uh, click the like button and uh, share this video with whatever you want to do with it. Alright, well my name is Hiram, thanks for watching.